it's, it's a big, big step. Can you game. do some yeah, photos, maybe? That would be sound. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Globally. Yeah. <laughs> Die Groupies. <laughs> yeah, the scale is really uh, different. Ich habe auch extra so ein bisschen provokantes Material. No, no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's good for Denmark. That is possible. But Eton was 10,000. Yeah. Semicron will be 3,000, so quite a lot. Yeah. But we will touch 10 billion euro this year. That's actually uh, That's more or less the double since 17. So in yeah. 17, which is five years back, we were 5.8. And this year we will touch 10 billion. So it's a sizable step. Well. It is. <coughs> yeah. Really nice to see the people are coming. <laughs> yeah. Good. Lars, jeg er nødt til, eller vi kan tage den på dansk, jeg introducerer dig til ham, der er her på Google Data Center. Kender du ham? Nej, nej. Han er R&D head af alle deres data center. Er du ham i J? JP, ja. 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 Jeg ved ikke, jeg skal se, om jeg kan, hvis vi ser ham, så kan jeg lige give dig en heads up. Ja. Okay. Enjoy. Sit back. The next uh, 45 minutes, you will be presented <coughs> to concrete examples and, and cases uh, within this area. Uh, so putting, you can say, the high goals, all the ambitions, the, the willingness to, to change, to a change that we heard about yesterday into something uh, real tangible. First, we'll, have a, a, we'll hear from uh, Christian Noll from DNF, uh, the managing director and co-founder of uh, DNF, uh, about concrete learnings from, from Germany. And then we'll invite uh, Lars Knack from Novenko and Søren um, Corning from Danfoss Drives uh, on stage to have a, a discussion and a presentation about a, a, a few of their, their cases. Uh, during the session, we will open for questions from you guys. So uh, uh, let me know if you have something uh, you would like to ask. And then I have to tell you that you should be aware that this is streamed to the uh, YouTube channels uh, by the Confer Confederation of Danish Industry and by uh, Denfoss. But first of all, I'm very delighted to invite my colleague uh, from our sister organization in Germany, DNF co-founder, managing director, Christian Noll, to give us an introduction um, from Germany. The floor is yours, Christian. Thank you, Katrine. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yes, why did I choose this picture of the <laughs> sexy potato? Um, <laughs> this is not just because potatoes um, are something Germans like, uh, it's also um, <laughs> something also Danish people like. No, it's because um, energy efficiency in the industry sector for many years was something like the hot potato. Nobody dared to touch it. Um, some said, okay, we've done anything we could do to save energy. If you put more burden on us, we will move away. Or if we hadn't done everything we could do, we wouldn't be here um, producing um, our goods in a country with such high energy costs. Um, energy costs are now the driver, which make energy efficiency indeed um, something which is um, even more sexy. And of course, uh, all we are sitting here um, um, are convinced uh, all the time that energy efficiency is indeed sexy. There's nothing to doubt about. Um, but um, yes, of course, it's also a matter of uh, a transition of a whole economy. And uh, um, the targets and goals are clear. Germany wants to get uh, climate neutral by 2045. And this also includes for each individual company to become climate neutral. So there's something to do. Uh, we as DENEF uh, are a network of now more than 200 companies um, in the field of energy efficiency and energy savings in buildings, in the industry sector, but also uh, ESCOs. And you might have noticed um, many of our companies are uh, Danish companies, so we are almost a DENEF and not just a DENEF. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can also see there are many solutions 
uh, they are just there and uh, for very individual cases, so there are more opportunities than, than challenges. Um, yeah, so I uh, always said Germany wants to get climate neutral until 2045. What does that mean for the industry sector? Um, there had been uh, four major studies in Germany issued last year. Um, and they say to get there we have to come to final energy savings of about 20% in the industry sector. Uh, on an economic basis we have uh, to come to even higher final and primary energy savings um, of course but the, in the industry sector of course due to fuel switches we have on some parts an increase but this still means that this additional energy consumption um, has to be overcompensated by energy efficiency measures to come to those absolute negative uh, consumption and um, yes of course now the energy price development require even greater efforts uh, and um, they make even more energy efficiency measures cost-effective. Yeah, what's a good example um, or takeaway from Germany? Um, I would say this is uh, absolutely the number of ISO uh, 50001 energy management certificates. So Germany um, is far um, leading uh, before China with a number of certification systems. And um, the reason for this is that reliefs to regulated energy price components such as renewables, grid surcharge, surcharges, but also carbon pricing, they are coupled as a prerequisite. You have to have a, a certified energy management system. Uh, this gives opportunities. Uh, this means that energy efficiency measures are known. They have strategic relevance on the top-level management agenda due to the structure of this ISO standard. Uh, and of course, um, each company has to come up with individual KPIs on energy efficiency to be monitored and to monitor progress. Um, still, there are challenges. So there is no requirement inside the norm to implement measures. You just have a soft requirement for an uh, ongoing improvement uh, process, but not uh, really each um, economic measures have to be implemented, it's not existing. So um, uh, in Germany, um, we also have a problem that there is a risk um, if you get too energy efficient, because if your energy intensity sinks below a threshold um, in terms of consumption or energy productivity, you might lose this benefit. And this might lead to a situation where companies say, okay, from this point I stop saving energy. Um, yeah, and something which is also uh, worthwhile is nowadays or with the target to become climate neutral the scope needs to be extended beyond just energy management towards climate management uh, without greenwashing of course yeah but is um, germany also a leader in terms of energy efficiency progress in the industry sector there is a ranking uh, done by fraunhofer institute and others is called uh, odyssey muir scoreboard and here germany only ranks 11 of um, um, all 27 EU states, um, so the improvement rate in the last years has been too low. Uh, industry uh, sector means here manufacturing, construction and mining, uh, but still um, you have to um, yeah, worship that if there haven't been technical energy savings, which are on an adjusted figure um, of above uh, about uh, minus 9%, so the counterfactual energy consumption uh, increase would have lead to even higher greenhouse gas emissions. So there is some effect, but the absolute savings are still too low in the final sector. Um, These are figures from the uh, pre-corona rate. So we will have to see what will happen uh, 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 next and also with regard to the energy price developments. Uh, a recent uh, survey which has been done by the University of Stuttgart still says that 70% of the companies plan to introduce carbon neutral products or to switch to carbon neutral production. 70% of them ask for support to do so. So they still don't do it um, on their own um, uh, to the full extent. And more than 60% even ask for regulation. Uh, when it comes to the political framework in Germany, the status quo is, um, of course, as each EU sta um, uh, member state, we have the requirement for so-called non-SMEs. Um, to introduce energy audits. Um, this is currently under revision on a EU level, so um, uh, this might be changed and might get stricter. We also have the opportunity or a program to introduce uh, energy efficiency networks. This is something like uh, Weight Watchers for energy savings. Uh, so companies learn from each other and motivate each other. Um, this is a volunta voluntary scheme. Uh, I uh, reset, uh, already said that energy management is a prerequisite for energy reductions and 
Uh, of course, we have uh, direct grants and subsidized loans. Um, in some last year, this is about half a billion euros a year. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the biggest energy efficiency program for industry and on plus there are other smaller programs. Um, by the end of this uh, week, um, the ministry will also launch a national energy savings campaign on the 10th of June, and uh, this will also not just direct to, um, to private consumers, but also to companies. What's missing? Um, energy management systems, we believe, are at a stage where they should become obligatory for any company, not just in exchange for benefits, uh, starting from a level of 5 gigawatt hours, which um, um, is uh, the equivalent of 18 terajoules per year. Um, the implementation of identified measures should become um, mandatory and um, still uh, we have <coughs> also to become to come to a more consistent regime on existing energy tax reductions because uh, um, the conditions are not uh, completely streamlined and it should be of course uh, ex be extended to climate management systems and uh, towards a strict implementation of measures. Um, Tax uh, incentives could play a role in a form of um, accelerated uh, capital allowance for energy efficiency, such as they are existing in Ireland and other EU countries, also Singapore, for quite uh, some time. Um, there will be carbon contracts for difference, um, which are more um, directed towards com more complex products to give them a better start. And of course, the ESCO market could play a role here for quicker implementation, but uh, this is an area where we have a lot of regulatory barriers. Um, the ESCO market is often forgotten when um, energy uh, efficiency or when energy regulation is done, they don't think about what are the effects to ESCOs. Mm -hmm. So um, this is just a quick um, uh, our outlook to what's happening policy-wise in Germany. And uh, <coughs> of course, our main message is solutions are there. Anything is possible uh, to implement, uh, even to have a better combination of energy management towards uh, climate management. And uh, we um, published a guideline on that, how you can get from energy management to climate management. Um, and if you're interested in that, um, you are yes, invited to contact my colleague uh, Tatiana Ruhl and she's happy to send it to you. So, and now I'm looking forward to discuss with you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian, um, for a very interesting perspective from, uh, from Germany. Now I invite uh, Lars Knack and Søren Korning to uh, up, up to join us up here. Um, Lars Knack is the CEO of Novenko Building and Industry, originally a Danish company founded 75 years ago and uh, now present all over the world. Lars has uh, been with Novenko for uh, more than 15 years. Søren? Uh, Corning is the Senior Vice President for Global Sales, Marketing and Services for Danfoss Drives. He has been with Danfoss for 13 years in different uh, leading positions all over the world, mm. different places uh, across the world. <laughs> and uh, um, um, I will start now with uh, giving the floor to Lars to present his case on uh, uh, that you have uh, that you have brought uh, with us uh, with you today to to uh, yeah to present <coughs> here to, to to the audience. The floor is yeah. yours. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Um, just to give you a brief uh, on Novenko, Novenko Building and Industry, uh, as uh, said, uh, been, uh, yeah, as we say, we move air for a greener and for a safer world. And the greener, that is the energy efficiency at the most, and the safer world, that is when we make uh, smoke extract from buildings, from car parks, and so on. Um, so that is another <coughs> part of our business. But that is, I mean, what we do. We move air, uh, and that is, uh, that is what we have done for 75 years. And we have develop, uh, been developing uh, continually um, high-efficient fan solutions uh, for different uh, industries. And uh, at the current point, we have a fan now that have an efficiency of 90, up to 92%. And that is in a wide range, uh, so it's not only for one point uh, of, uh, of the, 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 the max capacity, it is actually for a wider range, so that we have, I mean, the efficiency in a wide range um, when, we are, when we are running the fan. And that is, I think, a very, very in, uh, energy efficient. Um, we are today serving a wide range of, uh, of industries uh, on the building side, 
uh, processes and in, in industries, but also data centers making uh, cooling systems <coughs> for, uh, for data centers today. We have a broadened uh, focus also on sustainability. I think uh, that is also something that we need to take into account when we are discussing uh, energy efficiency. That is that we are looking into uh, to having a fan that is running for the full time, uh, prim primarily for the building, for the data center, for the lifetime of a data center. You don't need to replace it uh, two or three times uh, during the, the, the lifetime of um, of the process uh, equipment, so um, so that is one of the things uh, that we, uh, we we designed for a long lifetime, and many of our fans are running for 20, 25 years uh, with uh, with uh, the needed maintenance. Um, further on, I think we also are looking into the recyclability of our products. So we actually today have a documented uh, recyclability of 98 um, percent. So that is looking on the whole, uh, and we are looking now down to see if we can use already um, recycled uh, material for our products. Um, one thing that was also obvious that the cooling is that what we do is uh, cooling is becoming more and more and more, more and more people, especially in India and Southeast Asia, are getting uh, need for cooling and are getting uh, also um, can pay for cooling. So that will be uh, a big, big thing. And uh, we are active in Southeast Asia and uh, also in India. And in India, we actually made a case for a big um, tire manufacturer, JK Tires. They have nine factories all over India. And uh, there we started out, as we uh, usually do when we do uh, retrofits uh, and, no, and, and not making new builds is that we go in and uh, we find a, a, a fan that can be uh, retrofitted. We take an external consultant to come in and to, uh, to, to take measures of the old solution so that we know exactly uh, how much, what is the power consumption, what is the uh, airflow, what is the pressure. And then we change the fan and then we take in the consultant again, the external consultant, and then we make a new report. And then we make uh, the so that we can de demonstrate uh, the saving uh, and in many, many cases, we are making uh, uh, savings in the lower end is uh, 40, 45 percent and up to, uh, to, to 50, 60 percent uh, savings. Um, and then when they have that, uh, then uh, they can start up to uh, change uh, the, all the fans in the building and the, in the factory. And now with JK Tires, I think we are now currently making change at the they are factory number seven, uh, so it's, and that, that is also to take it into, what we see is that it needs to get into the budget and then they start to do the, um, so that is a very practical uh, way of uh, what we do. And I think we also heard a lot um, today about, uh, you know, recovering heat and so on. I mean, we need to look into moving air, moving water in an efficient way, and then we can do uh, the other things. So that is, um, that is our point. Um, yeah, thank you. Very good. Thank Very you, Lars. So over to you, Søren. You brought yes. a case with you as well. Yes, so in Danfoss Drives, or in Danfoss in general, we work with uh, providing technology uh, for various uh, sectors and industries, and everything we do is related to the green transition. So we focus on solutions and products and technologies that can generate the energy efficiency in, in all the industries we are, we are covering. And secondly, we also provide technologies that enables the renewable sector. And uh, I could give you various examples from our own factories, but I think we have heard a lot about Sønderborg uh, these days. <laughs> and then, for so I would like to get uh, a little international here with a case from Italy. We have a, a tomato, and if any British uh, people in here, tomato uh, sauce factory in Parma, but we have been working with them because they had very high ambitions on their scope uh, one and two uh, in the ESG uh, journey. They have uh, more than 100 electric motors in their conveyors and in their packaging uh, machinery in the factory. And uh, with a tight uh, measurement with the energy management system, they identified this as one of the areas for uh, which were up for the energy savings. We worked with them uh, locally and uh, with our engineers in, in the front line, we worked with the engineers at the customers and we worked very pragmatically, how can we make this uh, energy efficiency happening uh, with a very short uh, return on investment. Mm. And uh, by utilizing variable speed drive and established demand control in their processes, they saved more than 33% uh, energy with a return on investment less than two years. 
and that is for the factory there who are delivering 150 million jars of tomato sauce every year. Maybe you have tried it, uh, otherwise I can recommend it. <laughs> 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 uh, it's a, it's the factory is called Barilla, and uh, for them this is a CO2 saving of 71,000 ton per year. So it's a quite big step on their ESG journey, uh, supporting the scope one and the scope two. Mm. So I will park it there. Uh, I will not talk about our headquarters. You can. Uh, <laughs> later. Very good. Thank you so much, Søren. Uh, yes. So um, now uh, moving into uh, the uh, the discussion, uh, where I also will invite you to ask questions if you, if you have any. Uh, I'll start with you, Christian, um, because one said once that is the economy stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if the big energy saving potential is there, meaning also uh, a potential to save uh, resources, uh, money, etc., for the businesses and the industry, why is things not happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's the economy stupid. Um, <laughs> uh, and it also part of the truth is that there are non-economic barriers. And then if a company does a business decision. Um, sometimes it is when we, for example, talk about uh, cross-cutting technologies like ventilation or drives compared to other activities of a firm. They say, okay, um, w this is just a small amount of our cost structure. We invest into our core activities and then they forgot about energy savings. Mm -hmm. This might now change uh, with energy prices, so, uh, but still it's a lot about how uh, investment decisions are made uh, within companies. Um, um, if uh, are payback times, um, are they the, the right uh, key performance indicator or do we more have to think about what are like internal uh, 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 interest rates and things like that. So uh, this is a lot of education process, but I also think that a regulation can, can help here um, to set requirements at a cost-effective level, which is um, um, of, of high gain for companies. And that should happen, and then uh, the economy can solve it. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Last one, any perspectives? I, I would like to add uh, and maybe turn it a little around because mm -hmm. I think you're, you're absolutely right and uh, I also think it has to do with education and, and our focus. We, we're sitting in companies, we want to invest in this. The first thing we think about is a solar plant and wind turbine. This is very practical. Everybody can understand this is green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it takes, uh, in best case, seven years before the wind uh, turbine uh, park is up there or it takes at least a year or two before the solar plant is up mm -hmm. and running. This is crucial for our future, yes. But we need the short-term gain coming out of the energy efficiency. And for now, we have an energy crisis, we have shortages. We, have, uh, a, we need to get independent of uh, the uh, supply from Russia in terms of energy. Mm. And everybody is really hit on the pricing of mm. uh, energy. So the energy efficiency is key to curb that development fast, uh, while we, of course, establish the renewable uh, sector for the mm. future. Mm. So what's, what is uh, your experiences in terms of return on investment or payback time? So what are the, how long payback time is actually relevant to, the, to, to find the uh, interest by, by the industry? I think, uh, yeah, before the crisis, it was three years. I think that was uh, what everybody was. And now I think with the increasing prices for, mm -hmm. for energy, then, I mean, uh, it has just shortened the time. So, uh, so it has become uh, much more... Relevant, and I also see that the uh, industries that we have been approaching uh, half year ago, a year ago, is now coming back and say, "Oh, it's actual now. It's now. Mm -hmm. We want to uh, change because now they can actually see the the bill for uh, for the energy is uh, is increasing uh, significantly." So, um, yeah, yeah, and it's 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 good money, right? It's it's mm. a Business-wise, a two, three years uh, return on investment is, is, is also mm. making us a uh, much more profitable business today. Yeah. And every time you do uh, energy saving, you have more to learn for the years to come. So mm. every year we start to harvest on the savings that we established uh, three, five years back. Mm. And if we look on, on uh, now I will not refer to the headquarter again, <laughs> but if you refer to carbon neutral with a payback time of, of two to three years, this is mm. super good profitable business today mm. yeah. and it's it's really really helping us uh, of course uh, it's nice to tell the story but profit wise it's also a super healthy yeah. investment mm. but we should also shift this because i i think in the recent years so the the, the narrative of payback times didn't convince everybody 
Mm. So you should more shift to like a net vessel prelude idea and say, okay, you can put your bank uh, money on the bank and get no interest rates, yeah. or you can in invest it internally and get really huge interest rates. So, mm. and this should be shifted this paradigm of thinking because um, uh, payback uh, periods are just a a, uh, a figure for uh, for for risk assessment. How okay. long ca ca uh, is my money? Uh, invested in other things so I can't use it for other things so mm -hmm. and it should be more be uh, um, seen as an opportunity and as an investment of itself mm. yeah fair point well I see still a thing I mean uh, money talks and it's uh, yes. it, it is uh, I mean uh, yeah we need to be to, to come up with solutions that are compatible because yeah. then I mean else they are not adapted yeah, yeah. and um, that's just a hard fact uh, yeah. and that we have mm -hmm. today but I think also that we need, and that is, I think, Danfoss is a good example of uh, to have a high ambition uh, when you are doing uh, the energy um, uh, trans uh, the energy uh, efficiency programs, uh, because I think there's a lot. We see a lot of uh, technologies that can take you some of the way uh, for approximately the same uh, amount that you could go all the way. So I mean, we still still see that. Uh, we can come out to relatively new buildings uh, that are two years old and we can still make, uh, by mm. changing the fan alone, mm. making 15 to 20 percent uh, saving. Mm. And the guy is saying, okay, but I, th this is <laughs> two years old. I mean, uh, mm. so I think also with it's also about having an ambition. Um, mm. You also talked about uh, missing awareness among some companies or uh, not uh, have a, uh, an understanding about the uh, energy saving potential. So what can we do to increase the awareness about energy efficiency? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can give it a shot uh, for sure. I think uh, events like this, uh, the whole noise we have made in this week here around uh, with multiple stakeholders, uh, governments, a lot of experts, a lot of the networking going on. I think this is a good start. I think also we need to, to really educate our young people, uh, but also our aging uh, talent. Mm. I don't want to say I'm one of them, but I'm <laughs> getting there. Uh, and I think we are, we, we are leading our businesses today the same ways as we did 10 and 15 years back. And, and there is clearly a shift in the, in the, f in the motivator or the motivating factors of, mm. of our people. And we need to make it very attractive to work with these uh, green agendas. Uh, this is what they want. But we also, as, a, as business leaders, we need to support that this is the, the mantra of today's uh, leadership. Mm. So education uh, from young and, and to old, I think, is crucial. Yeah. Mm. I well, I would, I would say that, of course, price development and the current uh, 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 energy price situation and the war in Ukraine and the feeling that you also can like show uh, support to Ukraine uh, with saving energy is one part of it but still uh, a lot of um, if we talk about private wholesale but it also uh, comes to, to, to companies which are now um, uh, suffering energy price development, they clearly need s political support and mm. guidance. Mm. And uh, this is why it's so important that, uh, like the energy efficiency directive in uh, on the EU level, uh, but also um, international um, agreement and uh, down to uh, national or local regulation, um, policymakers give this support and this guidance and make clear it is a serious matter to mm. the public. So mm. they've done so with renewable energies and they did a great job. Mm. So the development is happening. It, although this could be accelerated, but mm. uh, in, the, in terms of energy efficiency, um, there was a lot of talk about making it a priority, energy efficiency first, we, but we, in on fact, we didn't see that on the ground happening uh, in national policies so far. Mm. So, mm. Christian, in your uh, perspective, how important is regulation within uh, energy efficiency for, for industry? Um, it is, um, because this is a field which is largely unregulated, or where it is regulated, we have um, uh, adverse effects that uh, it prevents uh, investments. So, I've given this, um, this uh, example of uh, the benefits you can gain, but if you save too much energy, energy you lose it. Mm. And uh, the, the, the ESCO market, so the companies out there who could help uh, companies to save energy, uh, there is regulation hindering in, 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 in doing them to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, um, I think uh, the, the idea to introduce um, a mandatory energy audit in the EU was a good idea. 
but it didn't lead to implementation so far. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, clearly say when it's cost effective, uh, why don't regulate it um, uh, on, a, on, a, on a comparable level we did with uh, like uh, home appliances and said, okay, uh, if it's if cost efficient, um, it's fair to regulate it. Mm. Mm. Well, I think what, what, what we start to see is that there's more and more focus on sustainability in a broad way. And I think that the energy efficiency is also coming in. So uh, before when you had a factory manager or a facility manager that was only looking on a return on investment, mm. you start to see that you have a sustainability manager mm -hmm. that is looking on carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. And that is, I mean, the beauty with, uh, with the energy efficiency is that you get the carbon uh, reduction day one. Uh, then you have to pay uh, back, I mean, the, the investment in uh, one mm -hmm. and a half, two years, uh, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. three years. But you get, I mean, the emission reduction mm -hmm. uh, day one, and that mm -hmm. is uh, what, what we can see, especially in multinational uh, companies. So, last in, in your perspective, so who, which, which decision maker in, in, the, in the company should you go to if you want to open the door for energy efficiency projects? Oh, that's, I think, is difficult because I see uh, still that, the, I mean, the, the real uh, focus, the big an action on uh, sustainability is mostly with, uh, um, with uh, multi uh, multinational companies that are really going, uh, I mean, a little down then, uh, the, the focus is not there yet, but I think that will come because I think it will be a license to operate that, uh, mm. that you're treating, uh, I mean, uh, the environment and you're doing uh, everything uh, the best you can, so I think, uh, mm. and also to attract uh, talent in the future, mm. I think that mm. will be... Uh, I, I, I have a burning uh, comment a little here because I think in many of our companies we have uh, sustainability officers and mm. we have a head of sustainability and ESG, we have an ESG strategy. I really like to say that we have in Danfoss, we have 40,000 people. We have 40,000 people responsible for our CO2 mm. uh, savings. And a very good and pr very practical example, I have used it many times, my people know. <laughs> Why on earth are we having plastic bottles in here? This does not require a CEO to change that or anything. This is something we can all do. Mm. Okay, I invite uh, you to uh, to ask any questions. Yes, I have one. We have one down there. Um, well, what's currently under development are standards for, um, for uh, not for climate management, but for, uh, for climate budgeting. Um, and uh, they are done by ISO or prepared by ISO. And uh, the good thing is that they are planned to be compatible to the ISO 50001, so you can build upon. So you have the, the, the energy management system, you have uh, your, your, your uh, carbon balancing, and you have to set your internal uh, greenhouse gas reduction target, which should be ideal, uh, ideally zero before 2045 um, in, in, in Germany. And um, we have this uh, methodology there, but I think it is important to start with energy management systems and things you can do on the ground, like energy savings in your company, uh, or uh, local um, renewable energy production and things like that. So companies don't start with offsetting before, before they have done their job 
uh, around their site or uh, in the site themselves. That's that's very important because otherwise we don't get there and everybody will declare himself to be uh, climate neutral by just buying certificates uh, from other parts of the world uh, without uh, doing his own job. Please, go ahead. No, I, have a <laughs> I, I have a <laughs> comment to that, then we can go back. Yeah. I, I, f I start to see that there is a movement towards the, what we call scientific-based target setting mm -hmm. in, in the ESG direction. And that is addressing some of the topics that you are questioning here. I still believe personally that it's early days. We all want to be leaders in ESG, so we mm -hmm. also, all of us, have to set our ambition level very, very high and learn on the go how to, to get there. Uh, and I think uh, many companies are doing that, and at least I can say from our side, we start to see customers asking, what is your KPI on A, B, and C, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. And that is related to the, to the movement. Mm. Yeah. Yes, just a, just a moment, because there is a microphone coming. So <laughs> Better. <laughs> OK. Um, is it on? All right. Uh, my second question is, 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 is for Dan Foss. Um, you know, to accelerate this, we really, it was brought up, you know, there's an investment gap in most companies. Yeah. Most companies are not investing in everything they rationally should, which could accelerate energy efficiency. And then, and one of the ideas that is promulgated is, well, we need to educate people more, all right? And I agree with that. But I think there's a gap in education is, is from CEO to CEO, right? So, you know, like Dan Foss, you get it. Right, your company gets it, and and, and 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 so you don't have an investment gap. You've you've moved on all yes. of those things, and we yes. can talk about training other people. But but but, do you think that there would be potential for leading companies, you know, the 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 C-suite people from leading companies to go talk to other companies about this, and that yeah. that might help address this yes. education gra gap gap. Yes. I fully agree uh, to, to your statement and, and your comments, and at least I think the, the current uh, crisis of, of energy is both on, on price, that is what is hitting us, uh, but very shortly we will have countries in, in the lack of gas to heat up their homes. Mm. All of this is driving that uh, sharing, and uh, when we talk to our largest uh, customers today, this is on sea level. Uh, what are you doing on ESG? How can we take a leap here? Mm. How can we uh, set the bar uh, high here together? So I, I think there is a movement here, but it can not go fast enough. That's the that's really the challenge we have to address. Yeah. 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 We have another question down here, and then we are. Moving to, yes, here. Uh, maybe more of comments. Uh, so I think it's still important to save the energy even though it's clean uh, because of the reason of uh, security of supply. So uh, it might be a good idea with carbon management, but don't forget the save energy. No. <laughs> exactly. All right. Goes hand in hand. There is one last question, and then we are actually very close to an end already. <laughs> really? Thank you. Sir Nutkin from the Global ESCO Network. Um, just a quick question. Do you face any supply chain issues? And the reason why I'm asking is that the, the competitor that we all know about, the renewable energy supply, they are actually facing supply chain issues. So, so focusing on, on energy efficiency, assuming that you do not, uh, would also benefit from diversifying mm -hmm. the supply chains. Mm -hmm. yeah. any, any comments to that? I mean, first of all, answering <coughs> the question, uh, do you face any um, yeah. supply chain issues? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 That's the short answer. <laughs> yeah, we, we do, but we are getting better in uh, firefighting uh, the journey. And then we have really, really seen a year with uh, tons of surprises in all supply chains across the world. Mm. Uh, lo from logistic to component to labor, mm -hmm. uh, transport. so transport, uh, part of the logistic uh, <laughs> bottleneck, so uh, yes, for sure, we are, we are get, uh, getting better and managing, and I think one thing we are learning is not only in, uh, energy efficiency, it's also internal efficiency. The, the, the things, the redesigns we earlier on managed in, in a year, or maybe even more, is today managed in three, four months, simply because of the need, <laughs> otherwise our factories would stop. Mm -hmm. 
that's so I, I think we're all getting better in, in that manner. We're all getting mm -hmm. faster. That goes again to go with the with the solution that can hold for a long year. I mean, so if you can go for yeah. a fan for 20 years, then go for that. Then uh, we can <laughs> take it from there. Mm. All right. One final question, and that is uh, from my end. So if we were to change one thing tomorrow that would speed up the uh, uh, focus and uh, yeah. willingness to do energy saving projects among industrial uh, processes and manufacturing, what would that be? So and would you start? For me, I mean, the whole energy efficiency uh, is not necessarily needing funding. It's a good business case in itself. So for me, the number one priority is education. Mm. Yes? I think we need also regulations, but I think we need more, uh, I mean, regulation on uh, specification uh, level, uh, housing regulations, uh, machine regulations, and so on, because that will drive also that uh, the energy efficiency in, uh, in total. Um, mm -hmm. But you need to get down on that level, I think, uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. to really... Uh, Mm -hmm. Christian? Yeah, but I would then add on that that we also need like um, 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 uh, state level um, energy savings targets which mm -hmm. have to become binding right now and we have to dare to do so. And you are referring to the energy efficiency directive? Uh, and EU the energy efficiency directive but also in any country of the world. So mm -hmm. this is nothing which is, uh, should be special uh, to the EU member states mm -hmm. so, but in any country should mm -hmm. be on the same pace as uh, increasing renewables uh, we should reduce energy consumption that's mm -hmm. for sure so we can't allow to uh, just um, um, uh, exchange the waste of fossil fuels by the waste of uh, renewable fuels no. yeah. exactly so all of you thank you very much for being here for presenting uh, concrete uh, examples from your companies and from germany Thank you for uh, taking part in the discussion actively by questions as well and comments. Uh, I have been um, um, uh, having a good time here. I hope you have as well. A few uh, practical information. Um, uh, next is uh, a coffee break uh, uh, of 15 minutes before we start again at 11. Uh, it will be served downstairs or just over here. Just out here, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you are to uh, attend the next industry session, it will be in here as uh, as well. And I think uh, the takeaways uh, from uh, from this session, hopefully uh, you think as well, is that uh, the uh, good uh, cases are there. There's a huge potential for energy savings and also economic savings. And uh, that we also need uh, some drivers in terms of uh, regulation and we need to work together. So by that, Thank you very much for, for attending this session. Thanks for being here. Thank you. <laughs>